So lastly, I just wanted to talk about checking model conditions. So as with previous hypothesis tests, we need to understand the conditions of the data in our model to have confidence in our results. So you can't just really start plugging everything in and uh, any kind of variables. You can't just put any variables here. You have to really understand them. You need to kind of explore their characteristics first. And it's important to remember the acronym LINE. So kind of make it easy. LINE, uh, we need to take some... Uh, we kind of modified some of these to focus on the, the acronym, but so f the idea is that linearity, independent observation, normal residuals, and equal, but so this here, equal is not really equal, it's more like constant, but equal for, forms the word line. So equal or really constant variability. And let's talk about these. So line, linearity. The data should show a linear trend. If there's a nonlinear trend, do not use linear regression. So if your data starts looking like this, this is not a linear regression, it's not appropriate. Now you can use some kind of related regression to model this, but we're not examining this in this course. And of course, other shapes as well. So, you know, this is not a linear shape and so on. And there's a nice image in the book that has a picture of various problems with data that are not appropriate for linear regression. Independent observation. So observation should be independent from each other. In many cases, especially time series data, the following time is often related to the previous time. So we really got to be careful when we're having time series data. So for example, when we're talking about a stock market data, well, the value of a stock on a particular day, let's say uh, December 10th, is related to the value of the stock on the previous day on December 9th. So if you have this kind of uh, lack of independence on your X points, it's you. It's a linear regression is not appropriate. Okay. Now you can you can still fit a line to it. You can fit a line and can, if you can find the best line, but those kind of tests regarding the probability are not really going to to work uh, the same way. It's not going to be valid to really just use the linear regression as we have talked about it here normality of residuals so you have normal or nearly normal distribution of points around the line so the residuals are the difference between each particular point and the line and sometimes so let's imagine a different graph here where the points you know the the are very close to a line like this and then you put a line oops that really totally didn't come uh across it but imagine that the points are very close to the line well in this situation the residuals are going to be low because the difference between each point and the line is small but we can have all the situations where the points are kind of there is seem there seems to be a linear relationship the, but the points are kind of far from the line a lot of them so you have a high residual whatever it is if you were to dis if you were to plot out a histogram of these residual values a histogram remember which about which is frequency here on the um, y axis and the actual values on the x axis we want oops oh my how did this happen it's really hard to draw a line with this so let's say this 5 this is seven, this is three. So for this to actually work, we need to have a nearly normal distribution of the residuals. So for example, uh, maybe most of the residual values, the distance between the points and the line is about five, five, whatever, five millimeters, five centimeters, five dollars, whatever uh, unit we're using. And very few are on the lower end, so very few residuals are about three, and very few residuals are seven, so most residuals are between like four and five, or between three and seven. That's what we mean by near normal distribution of the residuals. And you cannot really see it on this kind of graph. It's hard to see on this kind of graph, but you can plot the distribution of the residuals, and there's probably functions in order to do that, although I don't remember right now which one that is. 
And lastly, we have this idea of um, equal and constant variability. So variation around the regression line should be somewhat constant. So this seems like the previous one, but it's not exactly and um, or not necessarily exactly. So the, um, there's an example in the book where it shows how this uh, constant variability can be, uh, can be uh, lacking in a data. So imagine that you have some data points that show a linear relationship between the X variable and the Y variable. So, and this is a positive. So as X increases, Y seems to increase linearly. Now, what's happening here is that as X keeps increasing, the, the, the variability of the points on the line keeps increasing as well. You see that the, the, vari the points on this line keep increasing the difference between this compared to here. So in this case, we don't really have a constant variability between the points and the line or the residuals. And, um, and that's a problem for linear regression. So usually we want to check for that as well. That's the last one of the line model conditions. So I hope this was useful to you. You can check out more details on the textbook. And that's it for this one. And I will uh, see you next time.